Welcome to Trending Faith here on GCU TV. My name is Ashley Romantic, and today we are going to do something a little different. I am here with Jason Hiles, and we are going to go behind the scenes of Trending Faith. So what is your normal role here at GCU? Well, I'm the Dean of the College of Theology, so a lot of what I do uh, relates very directly to the administration of the college. Um, of course, we bring in professors. We ensure that the professors are supported in their roles as they instruct students, as they interact with students, as we assess students and really assess the performance of our programs and, and ensure that we're moving students in the right direction as they prepare for ministry, uh, roles as worship leaders, and so on. I'm also very involved um, really at the university level in our uh, initiative to integrate faith and learning across the discipline. So we spend a lot of time, uh, I spend a lot of time with other deans, assistant deans, other members of uh, faculty uh, in other colleges, trying to ensure that they can um, think through very well um, what happens when you uh, provide an education from a very specifically Christian perspective. A lot of work that needs to be done in integrating various disciplines with the Christian faith. So. Um, a couple different directions, and uh, of course I get my hand into a lot of other projects as well, but I, I tend to stay fairly busy with those in, in general. And what do you like about the show? The show is challenging in some ways because as a theologian, you always want to say more to ensure that you're comprehensive, you're touching all the key points. And so some of the questions that were being asked are these huge questions. And we have, you know, a few minutes, five, six minutes. Sometimes we run a little longer, but to, to address these really big questions. But what I really like is the fact that we have to compress our answers and bring the conversation down to a level that's accessible to the average person. That that challenges me because it's one thing to know something where you know you can just go on and on for hours it's a different level when you can actually touch the highlights compress it and and share those sorts of of thoughts with people who don't necessarily share your technical language or the same background or so on it's a lot of fun to work at that level i spend a lot of time of course interacting with students and people in the churches and so on doing that anyway and so i work at it uh, about as hard as i can and trending faith gives me an opportunity to focus some of those uh, conversations on particular topics and i enjoy it and i always like to hear what tim has to say about it because he'll uh, one of us will start the other will kind of respond but it's interesting because we think uh, sort of in parallel ways, but as we start to talk, it's interesting to just to, to have another perspective that's running parallel, but maybe emphasizing other aspects of the same basic question. So uh, the challenge of it is fun, and the interaction is fun, and I love the subject. I, the subject matter, I typically just think about and talk about theology throughout the day, throughout the week. It's, I mean, you know, I can't believe sometimes I get paid to do anything <laughs> connected to theology. I would do it for free if, it, if uh, I could pay the bill. So yeah, I, I guess I love all of it. So what is one thing that viewers might not know about Trending Faith? Oh, that's, a, that's an interesting question. Uh, I, I always assume they know everything they need to know about <laughs> Trending Faith. Uh, no, uh, you know, based on some of the, the feedback we get, I, I wonder sometimes um, if they understand that what we're really trying to do is just open up conversations about theology. We're, we're certainly not laying out a full-blown theological position. We're not, we're not walking through every passage or, or approaching from every uh, aspect. And so um, one thing that may be helpful for, for them to understand is that there's a sense in which the audience is part of that conversation, and as they pick it up and they think about it, as they you know sort of work through these things in their own minds and maybe apply them into areas that uh, they're most interested in, they're sort of they're they're sort of on the periphery because they're not in the studio, but they're also very much a part of that. Uh, we never intend for the the few minutes we spend together to be sort of the open and shut case for whatever positions we articulate. We expect people to to hear that and to take that into consideration, but also to bring their own views uh, to the table and to interact with us. And so uh, I would say, um, I don't know that the audience always understands that that's, that's the way we're coming at it, and we hope they engage us in that way. We certainly don't feel like we know it all, and we don't feel like we've said it all by the time we've we finished talking. There's a lot more to say, a lot more to think about. There's a lot of detail. When you think about simply applying some of the principles that we're talking about, just bringing them to bear in a particular situation, there are a lot of other questions that come up. Mm -hmm. So sometimes Tim and I will, you know, a question will come up and one of us will sort of say, well, in Scripture, this is what we find, which is a which is a critical starting point. But having started with Scripture, you have to go into some particular context or area of your life and begin to think, all right, what do I do with this? But as you begin to apply it, you begin to live it out, 
more questions come to the surface. Like, wait, I hadn't thought of this. Now I got to go back to the Bible and rethink again. And this set back and forth, that dialogue that we go through all the time. Tim and I go through this naturally as we come to our own conclusions. And of course, we're in conversation with others, uh, other people of like mind and faith. So uh, I would say viewers, viewers, I, I think should be assured that we, we know they're out there and we hope they're engaging us like that. For those people who maybe have more questions and they want to ask them in person, what would you suggest they do? Yeah, um, there, there are a couple of different things uh, that are possible there, and, and I'll touch on a few of these. One is, of course, we have an email address and we're always taking in more questions. Um, a, a week or so ago when we shot um, some, some of these uh, episodes, we had a dozen solid questions, and I was, I was sort of, I was like, let's shoot all these, let's answer all these. We don't have time always, uh, and I know there are more questions than the dozen I saw that day, um, because those are being sent to me selectively. Uh, there's an attempt to sort of, uh, you know, put together questions that overlap with one another, so we can reach as many of, uh, touch on as many of these topics as possible. But there are a lot of these that that come in regularly. We get some great questions. They come from a lot of different directions. So that helps if a, if a person really wants us to an, uh, address a topic, simply send in an email, making us aware of that uh, of it is a great place to start. Sometimes a person may hear something or may begin to think with us along a particular line of thought, and they say, well, I want to dig deeper. I want to know what to do with this. So there is always the possibility of personal study. I would suggest that a person who wants to dig a little deeper uh, would find a good solid study Bible, begin to open it up and work through the actual scripture. But if you've got a reliable scholar who's just trusts in the word of God and is trying to make sense of it, often there's commentary at a really accessible level. You can read what God has said and how this uh, particular scholar or group of scholars has uh, come to interpret it. I've mentioned a few uh, Bible versions in, in prior conversations, so they're very solid resources like the ESV Study Bible, the NIV Study Bible. Virtually everyone puts out a Study Bible version of whatever their what all the publishers do this, and they very often do like an introduction to a particular book or an introduction to the New Testament, the Old Testament, and then they have sometimes verse by verse commentary. Really helpful. So if you're confused about a verse, confused about a topic, that's a great place to go. Another direction that we often overlook, just as sort of American Christians, we're very individualized, we're very individualistic. We we don't always think about just going to the folks in our church or a pastor or someone who's mature in the faith and just in a community like that, interacting and saying, hey, these are some things that have come up. I've I heard this on Trending Faith, or I've been thinking about this. And, you know, Trending Faith, the, the, the series hasn't quite gone in this direction. Like, I'd like to go. I'm, I'm really struggling or thinking or whatever. In a community of faith like that within the church, you can ask questions and you can interact with people. And many times they've, they've either experienced the things you're experiencing or they've had the questions you've had or they're wrestling with the same passages in the Bible and they're trying to make sense of them. And so that dialogue, that dialogue in community, life together within the context of life together can be very powerful. And interestingly enough, when people know you well enough, they know who you are, they know your personality, Sometimes they can help you with the application. They can actually help you understand things that may be going on in your heart that you're not quite aware of or things that are going on in your experience that you haven't been attentive to or made sense of yet. And uh, so I often find that in conversation with people who've got to know me within the local church, um, that some of those questions, some of those areas of study begin to open up. So if I have an area of interest, I have a question, you know, even if I don't necessarily um, I, I don't know of any particular person in my community of faith that will have the answer. I still like to raise the question and get them thinking with me. And typically, it's kind of like what happens with Tim and I. As we go back and forth, it broadens the conversation. It helps me to think more deeply, sort of three-dimensionally rather than two-dimensionally or sort of in a flat way, like I might be inclined all by myself. Jason, thank you for coming and speaking with me today. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. And I hope these last two episodes have helped you get to know our two hosts a little bit better. And as always, if you have a question or a comment, please feel free to contact us at trendingfaith at gcu.edu or use the hashtag trendingfaith.